Hi everyone, Sarah Lee's here with John Ichido Hill. I can't even say your name right. Ichido Hill. Ichido is a Very Japanese well spoke. name. Love your name, Ichido. What does Ichido mean, actually? It means uh, firstborn son. Nice. Love that. Firstborn. Yes. <laughs> There's a whole thing about firstborns. So, I am here with John today. We're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the media distortion. Um, oh, today's date is what? September 4th? Friday, September 4th. Exactly. And we're going to talk about media distortion. And uh, I'm, want to talk, I'm wanting to talk about reverse speech because I feel like that's a really a reversal spells and how those operate within the media and how they distort the truth or they make up lies and it's becoming so obvious to everybody and the more they do it the more obvious it will become to everybody what's going on um, and then also we want to talk about why there has been wars in terms of stargates and portals and energy centers and why the deep state went in in the first place with economic hitmen and crashed economies of certain countries and brought them into ruin so that they became dependent on those banking systems and banking families rather than being sovereign nations, right? Right. Um, and then we can talk about what is being done to bring that back into balance in terms of peace and prosperity, because that's a huge, key factor that people need to understand about what's going on behind the scenes that is creating the movement towards peace and prosperity on the planet in a large scale way you know with the global financial reset and all of those factors right right and peace agreements being made in the middle east amazing so go ahead i would love for you to start with um, what's up for you right now in terms of those pieces of information uh, that you were just speaking to in terms of the peace agreements? Well, uh, you know, it started with, um, with Trump. Uh, and he, I don't know if he said this himself, but I see him as a peace and prosperity president. Mm -hmm. And so his big vision is to bring prosperity and peace to the planet. And he started in the Middle East uh, with that historic peace agreement between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. But just today, uh, he, it's not exactly a peace agreement, but it is an e economic agreement between Serbia and Kosovo. But it's a huge step forward for both of those countries. And the fact that they are going to begin to have economic ties uh, is a huge step forward, and they both complimented uh, Trump for um, doing what he did because the way I think, you know, Trump is a businessman, and I think the way that he sees things is in terms of peace is to bring prosperity through economic ties, and then peace can come right. um, afterwards. If everyone is abundant, there's no need for war. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, you know, he's trying to do that here, um, you know, just in terms of, uh, he calls it success, but I see it that the more prosperous all of us become, you know, whether you're a minority, whether you're- Doesn't matter, uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, your gender, your orientation or anything, is yeah. can we all be prosperous? And once we're prosperous and, and in abundance, then, we don't have to worry about, um, I mean, we can be united. Right, and the other thing is the disparity between the rich and the poor. So a big way that the deep state, I'm gonna call it the cabal, has controlled the population, in my personal observation of it, is that they created a debt slave culture, right? So that people were slaving to survive, right? And then they would, were exactly. going into debt just to live some level of a comfortable existence, right? 
while other people were completely outside of that and completely got whatever they want. You know, they were living the high life and everybody, they wanted, they created idol worship so that all of these people would want to be that because it was so unattainable. So there was like such a big gap between the two, such a huge disparity that people were really always striving to get to where these people were living the high life and having whatever they wanted. But in order to have that high life, you contract your, your soul, like period. That's just the way that it happens, right? You literally have to contract your soul to have that level of prosperity and freedom, quote unquote, in the old world. And, and, and that's the, not a natural, it's not natural because there are people that are massively abundant that aren't in that, right? But they are never as abundant as those people because they it, had hijacked the whole system. Exactly. And I think the other aspect to it is that it's about control. And right. once you um, eliminate the middle class, Right. You having the elite, the, the managerial elite, and then you have the serf class, the people that basically serve the elite. Yes. And that's where we're headed. And it was about total control of the serfs. That's where we were the, headed. Exactly. We were headed. We and are now not headed there now. That is completely exactly. shifted. And this is why you're seeing the reaction in the field with all of the paid protesters and Tifa rioters destroying cities. And what cities are they destroying? Democratic cities. Why are the Republican cities not burning? It's not because Republicans are necessarily rich or they're getting their way. Like if, if, if Trump was a dictator, okay, let's just say if Trump was a dictator, everyone would be rebelling against him, all the political stances, but they're not. It's very specific people in very specific cities. And those people, all of those people that are actually doing what they're doing to rebel against Trump and point the finger and blame him are convicted pedophiles and human traffickers. They have been arrested they have ankle bracelets. And they're also brainwashed people, unfortunately. Well, yes, they're completely brainwashed or they're I mean, just fundamentally in agreement with what they're doing and they're defending their right to exist on that level. And, right. and there's, it's not, it's good versus evil. There's no, it's not about, I mean, if these people cared about their cities, they would not allow this to continue. Exactly. They, would, and, they wouldn't be able to, they can't blame Trump. They're blaming Trump, but it's, it's irrational. Like, if you actually look what's happening, it's ludicrous. It's complete lunacy. Yeah, it's, it is. And uh, the thing is, it's the educational system that has been at work. And that's what I mean by brainwashing is yes. that there's been an insidious um, level of educating people into this kind of wrong thing. This uh, idea group of think, reversal, yeah, groupthink, and and the idea that um, you know I deserve this, you know, this kind of entitlement, yeah, that occurs for people. So it's it's really sad, but it there's so many sad. people that are that have been brainwashed in that way. Not only that, but I want to just point out the the regard for human life and how that has changed. Because that is something we're seeing very distinctly in the rioters and the people that are getting injured in these cities. Um, they're trying to make it so extreme for the Trump supporters as if the Trump supporters are violent, right? Yeah, and it's the media. All, yeah, but what we're actually seeing is the violence and the burning and all the stuff that's been going on for 100 plus days in my city alone, okay? Oh, God, yeah. All right, so the Trump supporter that got shot the other day in the back, he was unarmed walking down the street with his friend, 
his partner, his business partner. And you can, on the footage, you can hear them say, we've got one over here. We got a Trump supporter right over here. We've got this Trump guy over here. And the guy runs up behind him and shoots him at point blank range, like within six feet of him. He runs up, shoots the guy and runs off. You see it all on camera, it's all filmed, okay? And before the other guy knows what's happening, his friend is on the ground and his heart has been exploded. His heart has been shot out. Now what's interesting is the guy that shot him was interviewed just before this happened by someone and he said and claimed he was 100% Antifa and he had a black fist tattooed on his neck, right? And then he got interviewed, I guess, afterwards and said he, he shot the guy in self-defense or it was a couple days before he had shot somebody else in self-defense. Now he was completely an Antifa person. Like there's no question about it. So when they went to, and he lived in Lacey, Washington, he didn't even live in Portland, right? So when they, the, the, they tracked him down, right? And um, he came out of his car with an AR-15, which is like a, a automatic rifle, like a full on, like doo -doo 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 -doo, that kind of rifle. He came out of the car with it in his hands and they were just going there to arrest him. And, and like, you know, and they all had to pull their things because he had an AR-15 in his hands, right? Like he was gonna shoot them all dead. And they're blaming the cops and they have compassion for the guy. So, and then the, the, the BLM protesters were saying, or the Antifas, because they're, they're obviously now mixing themselves together. Um, the one woman was, there's footage of her saying, um, you know, we did a good job tonight. I have no, I have no regard for this man that was shot. I don't even care because he was a Trump supporter you know, death to America, basically. And the fact that people are, this is the distortion. The fact that people are saying death to America and chanting death to America, to the own country that they were raised in, they're not, they're not doing anything productive. They're not doing anything that is actually going to get them anywhere. They're just causing more violence and more destruction. And that is irrational in terms of like protesting. They're not peaceful. There's nothing peaceful about what's going on, right? And the fact that this is going on for a hundred plus days and they're, they're trying to burn down apartment buildings in downtown Portland. They literally tried to burn an apartment building with people inside of it a residential apartment building downtown portland yeah ted wheeler's condo complex right the the blm so, protesters are doing that yeah so Wait, I, what part of that makes sense he's blaming trump that doesn't make sense those aren't trump people burning down his building those are blm people burning down his building telling him to resign. Right. He's not far left enough. He, 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 well, refuses, clearly. <laughs> well, he refuses to abolish the police. So that's why they want him out. They want someone that I will I didn't completely have that abolish the police. Right. Well, there's a huge sign. I actually took a picture of it that says abolish the police on a, on a, on a, a building in Portland on Mississippi, it says abolish the police. It's a huge banner. Yeah, and, and the thing is the, the agenda behind all of this yes. is to uh, create total chaos. And they also so, have robotic crews of um, AI and robots that would then become the police so that they're taking it out of like the human judgment character type of thing. Well, yeah, then it can be controlled by the elite. Exactly. Yeah, People so, don't even realize this is going on and that that's the, where we're headed. But, but they, they don't have that information, right? 
Yeah. So they're, they're rebelling because of their emotional feelings of, I was cheated in life, or I didn't get what I wanted. You know, that's where these protesters are at. And it's not so much about the color of their skin. They're, they're making white people feel guilty for being white for the color of their skin. They're doing a reversal racism wise, right? They're trying to make people, f and then the schools. Oh, have you heard about this? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you're the talking education, about- Education, this, yeah. Yeah, race wow. theory, critical race theory. Critical theory, right. Yeah, critical race and theory. And they're teaching this to children. Mm -hmm. And they're also trying to teach four-year-olds how to masturbate. They're trying to put that into the school curriculum. Yeah, it, it's, it's about, it, this, it's, that's it's just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, California has now um, uh, passed a bill. Mm. Uh, SB 145 that, and SB 384. Yeah, 145 is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, so 145 is, right. It's the age of consent being uh, within 10, so not convicting uh, people who have sex with someone within 10 years of their age by the age of 15. So in other words, if someone's 15 years old and they sleep with a 25 year old, it's yeah, okay. Sex with a, yeah, and this is about sex with a minor. But it is sex with a minor because you, anybody over 15 can sleep with somebody within 10 years. So if that person's 15, they can have sex with a five year old. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's totally insane. It's completely this is, insane. Yeah, this is where it's going. They're trying to make no. the age of consent four years old right now. Well, they're, they're normalizing pedophilia. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that goes they're into- They're not hiding it. Exactly. <laughs> it's, they're passing it's all coming out. The law because all the lawmakers are involved, right? Yeah. So yeah, I don't know about all, but a lot. Right. A lot. But I mean, to a, a large degree, the lawmaker, the people in the Senate and the houses, those are the people that are actually trying to manipulate and maneuver these laws. And, and yeah. so here's, here's an interesting thing. Um, we went into martial law in 2014 under Obama. We actually, there was a bill passed for mar or martial law was put into effect back then. So we are that? actually under martial law. In September of 2014, I believe it was. And why was it? They just did it under the radar. And then somebody found out about it and published it. I don't remember the reason for it. At this point, I don't remember. But there was a reason why they put it into place. But they put it into place ahead of time. And then also okay. what's happening right now with the lockdown, right? The executive order, it's six months before that can be revisited. And, and um, it's an official six months before it can be undone. So right now, well, FEMA, What executive order are you talking about? The, the lockdown order that we're in right now, that we've been in, the national- Yeah, but that's state, that's state by state, isn't it? Trump no, the national ordered. executive order that he made to shut down the country. He took him. So what happened is he. No, those were just guidelines. He didn't actually do an executive order. He said these are the guidelines. Country? Yeah, he didn't shut down the country. The, is, there were some states that didn't, did not shut down. South Dakota didn't shut That's down. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so South Dakota did not shut down. And Idaho actually is trying to pass a law right now or they're, they're going to the, the lawmakers right now in Idaho yeah. and saying, you know, enough of this. Yeah, this is, this is federalism. So federalism states that, that the local and state level has more power than the federal government and that they can choose. So Trump was, Trump's always been following the constitution. Right. So he exactly. never ordered anything. He just said, these are guidelines, you know, we're asking you to, um, the emergency to, order is to, what I'm thinking of, though. The emergency order that he made? Well, it wasn't an order. It was, a, it was guidelines. These are guidelines from the CDC, and, from the CDC, mm -hmm. and it was to slow the spread. Right. 
So there's and one thing though, something that he did on March 13th cannot be undone until September 13th. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know exactly what it is then because I thought it was the emergency order that put us into FEMA. So we are, we're in FEMA as of March 13th. Supposedly. Okay, well, that, that may be true, but that's, that's a little different because that is FEMA will help the states. You see, FEMA is about federal emergency management. Right, but that's agencies. what I'm saying. FEMA is under control right now. Like he's not actually president, but they're saying that he is, he's acting as president, but actually FEMA is in, is, we're in an emergency. I don't know if we are at, anymore, but we were from March 13th to at least the beginning of may for six right, weeks right and that sure. would be that 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 agency was helping states and so that was how uh trump was able to provide emergency aid right. and money to all the states so then probably yeah. after that that's when he said okay it's up to you guys what you do or whatever well it was always up to the states as to what they did specifically but he put out guidelines right okay Emergency guidelines, though, right? Something about the emergency. Well, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. FEMA. FEMA is. It's yeah. like whenever there's a disaster in a state. Yeah. Then uh, FEMA goes in and helps out. Right. So, like right now with the hurricanes that just appeared out of nowhere, um, <laughs> Hurricane Laura, I think it was. He was able to to bring in people. So. One of the things I will say is that from my observation with previous disasters, um, FEMA was not on his side <laughs> and not on the side of the people at all. They were definitely not a benevolent organization. They were definitely deep state. And now they have turned. I have seen him turn them towards good. I've seen that happen. I've watched right. that yeah. happen over this period of time that he has been in office there's a lot of people that he has gotten on the right side of it you know whereas right. before when he started he was literally battling every step of the way what i didn't understand though is that nancy pelosi wasn't actually the speaker of the house until january of 2019 and that's when shit started to hit the fan for real i mean he was battling up until that point but she wasn't in a position of actual power, power, power until well, January of 19. But what's interesting is she was in power during George W. Bush in 2007. She was the Speaker of the House as the 52nd Speaker of the House. Then somebody else was the 53rd and the 54th. And then she became Paul Ryan, I think. And then she became Speaker of the House again. And I don't know how that happened, that all of a sudden she became Speaker of the House. Oh, that's because uh, it was the GOP. Oh, Ryan, but, something happened. Well, yeah, because the Democrats won the House. During the midterm elections, they won the House, 2018. Okay. Midterm elections, uh, November of 2018, the Democrats won the House. Now, according to Q, QAnon, the um yeah see left, i don't understand politics nearly enough to understand yeah. what actually so, happened so they let the democrats want win the house but this was specifically well, why would they do that to take them down okay, right because well, that's to what i'll tell you why them. i'll tell you why the i want to know this is good <laughs> the Here reason we go. they they let the democrats win the house because they knew that there was all kinds of chicanery going on i mean we all thought I mean, I was a Trump supporter at that time. We all thought it was going to be a red wave. There's going to be, you know, we're going to keep the House. We're going to keep the Senate and all that stuff. But what the, the, the strategy was, was to focus on the Senate and allow the Democrats to win the House. The Senate was the key because the Senate was, is the upper house. And that means that okay. they can block anything that the House does. But... The reason oh, they, wow. wanted the, they wanted the Democrats to win the House is to expose them. Yeah, for sure. You see, once the Democrats won the House, they went on to impeachment. They did all, they did all this crazy stuff. bullshit. Yeah. And, and Trump also did another thing, which is part of the strategy, was to focus on the squad 
which is the fringe left, the kind of the fringe The very left specific movement. squad, which is Pelosi, Schumer. Yeah. No, no, not Pelosi, Schiff. not Pelosi. No, the squad is AOC. Oh. Um, the women. Ayanna Presley, uh, Ilhan Omar, and Rashida Tlaib. That's the okay. squad. Uh -huh. And these are far the left ladies. lunatics, right? <laughs> And so he focused yeah, on real. them and then made Pelosi uh, defend them. And so it gave power to the squad. And so that pulled the whole Democrat party to the left. And it created all the stuff that we're seeing. You see, the whole thing was to expose the Democrats. And that's how uh, Pelosi, and, and he also wanted Pelosi to become the Speaker of the House because yeah. she is not completely stable. <laughs> and so he wanted her in the position because she may not have gotten the Speaker. There was, there was some competition. Oh, really? And so she got the Speaker of the House. And specifically, again, it was all about creating this uh, exposing of the Democrats, exposing of the elite, because uh, she epitomizes the elite. She is like the Marie Antoinette <laughs> of, of the 20th century, you know, with her Sub-Zero freezer, $20,000 Sub-Zero freezer with all the ice cream, the specialty ice cream. That and she her has. getting her hair blown out and saying that exactly. she was set up. Exactly. All really? of that stuff. Really? Yeah. Really, you can't take any, you can't hold yourself accountable for the fact that we are in shutdown in your District 12. She is District 12 in San Francisco. Exactly. Have you seen District 12? Oh, yeah. Wow. People shitting on the streets, walking around with their pants down, needles hanging out of their arms. Literally, you've, I've seen the fucking footage. It's yeah. scary. And now it's gotten worse because uh, they have this new law that says that people can steal up to $1,000 and they can't be prosecuted. So it's basically legal to steal stuff up to $1,000. And so people will go into a store, they'll just grab up stuff and then looting. walk out. Looting. Yep, looting. But legal looting. <laughs> It's become That's insane. It. Yeah. Now you wanted to talk a little bit about um, about well, these, one of the uh, things portals. about well, one of the things I was going to say about District Twelve, very specifically. Okay, so Anton Lavey, right, was also in that area. Remind me who Anton Lavey is. He's the Church of Satan. Oh. Presidio is right there. It's across the bay from District 12. District 12 has, I think either District 12 has Presidio or it's across the bay and Presidio is on the other side. And Presidio is where they did all the mind control experiments and all of the, you know, massive MK Ultra programming and all of that, okay? during the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s. For many years, they had stuff going. They didn't claim that, but that's what was going on up until the 90s, I think. Yeah, it was a military base. Right, with Michael Aquino. So who has the Temple of Set, who's now, I, th I believe, on the other side, immortal, um, but he passed. He transitioned, right? So now we have... Anton LaVey, Michael Aquino, Aleister Crowley, and all of these, and David Bowie. We have all these people that have done ritual deaths and are on the other side in an immortal situation, right? That are still participating and controlling what's going on on the astral, right? I mean, I've literally interacted with these people, like for real, in sessions, like I've had to deal with these people from the other side. They are still alive and well, you know what I'm saying? Their consciousnesses are super distinct. Their energetic signatures, 
they operate, they know they're fully conscious on the other side. They may not have a body, but they definitely have all the other levels. Okay. So Presidio and that area across the bay is a living crystal right there. Okay. So they have certain areas that are under lockdown that they've had very specific um, things going on for many, many years. They, so all the military, there's military bases on all the living crystals around the world or around them or any of the portals or vortexes or stargates, there's some military base nearby. So for example, in Stonehenge, Stargate 11, excuse me, uh, there are 21 military bases in Wiltshire County in England. Really? <laughs> really? There are three military bases in any other county, tops in England. There are military bases from every, so it's not just royal military, you know, royal uh, army or, you know, England, UK military. It's military from all over the world. Why would they need military from all over the world parked near Stonehenge? Explain that, right? And Avebury. So what they have is there's these huge portals and stargates in England that are, you know, in the stone circles there, right? And they have now taken that energy and they've siphoned it off and they've like redirected it into the military base right next door so that the actual energy of the stargate is being siphoned to the military base and they're working with it, they're playing with it, they're doing all kinds of crazy with it. And then there's a dark grid that's all over the earth that is the original uh, Stargate grid that they have now been siphoning all the energy to the Vatican. So well, the Vatican back, is one of the locations. Why don't we back up just a little bit because- um, Yeah, it might be- Can you tell me more easy. about uh, what the purpose of the stargates are, you know, the portals. Right. And the grid. What's, okay. what's the original purpose? So the, the natural grid that exists um, is a grid of living crystals and also stargates that were used to keep everything in balance, like a, like a, a net around the earth. The grid lines and the ley lines and everything were utilized to keep the entire earth in balance, right? Okay. And then on top of that, there's overlays of um, control negative reversal grids that, so the, the grid lines are energy, right? And the energy naturally flows between heaven and earth, basically, you know, between the cosmos and here. And it's how the, the earth, uh, provides energy for the planet and for the people of the planet. So we all naturally have a piezoelectric connection with the earth, a, a magnetic electric. So like, for example, if you lay on the earth, you immediately start to transform and all your energy, because we're electrical, right? Our bodies are electrical. So our electrical circuitries naturally come at, back into balance when we go into nature because we are connecting with the raw energy of life, which is that magnetic electrical charge, the negative and positive ions, right? That are in balance within nature. So when we come into contact with that, our bodies then go back into balance, okay? So these stargates and portals were used interdimensionally to bring in and exit and out you know, different societies, different cultures, different um, galactic uh, civilizations could come in and out of the portals and come in through, you know, however you want it, however they came in, because there's many ways that they could come in, but they also served as ritual 
locations where huge amounts of energy were able to deposit onto the planet and they were like, you know, it was like a feeding tube for the cosmos to bring energy onto the planet to, to provide for the natural flow of energy within the earth. And well, it sounds like it could also be used to uh, power everything. Intention. Atlantis, oh, everything. So yeah. Atlantis had, you know, big, huge crystals that really literally uh, electrified the whole grid. And that's what the, en the energy, the free energy, basically. So the energy of the city was run off of those crystals and off of that natural free energy that is in the air, right? So those energies were generators. I mean, sorry, the crystals were generators for the city of Atlanta, you know, for Poseidon, um, for that city, the main city of Atlantis and the continent of Atlantis, right? And the way that it was set up, it was set up in the center and then there was like, thir tw there were 12 temples around and there were like all these, energies and there were layers like circular layers right that went out and then there were the temples in the mountains that held very specific qualities to them and they were utilized to train priestesses and train people in the ways of very specific things like there was a temple of love there was a temple of knowledge and in each one of these temples there were um living crystals right and there were crystal skulls that sat in the center of the temples that would harness like, like, um, like an energy generator, like one of those round balls that had the, you know, the little electrical things hit it, you know, and it, it like lights up and it has a little lightning thing or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Those balls, you put your hand on it and it does the, one of those. Yeah. So yeah. that's what the crystal, so the crystal, um, skulls were consciousness that were in the form of these it was like a record keeper and those sat in the center of the temple on a pedestal and then they were had the ability to connect all the the divine energies and to transmit information so we so, had at that time a telepathic connection and were able so, to group together in one sync so what is the cabal trying to do with these, uh, this grid and these uh, portals? Right. So what they have been doing, but they're, they're not able to get away with anymore because of all the work that's been done, okay. is that they had the power of the control grid. They had control of the power grid. Let's just call it the power grid. Okay. And they had set up spells and siphoned off the energy through, through the ley lines and siphoned them off to specific crystals, the energy generator crystals, the bigger ones. And they were using that to control the power of the earth. They were using it to control the people of the earth. They were using it to siphon off all the energy, the natural energy, the free energy was being siphoned off and going into a power generator crystal under the Vatican was one of them. Um, and so they were holding all the gold there. They were holding all the artifacts, the main artifacts that of, of like Excalibur, for example, was being held under the Vatican. The giant statues from Greece were being held under the Vatican. So many things are being held under the Vatican. All of that, it took 600 plane loads so they hit the Vatican first. When Italy went in COVID and all the priests died, that is when they went in and got all the gold out. You're and talking about the, it, white, the white apps? Yeah. They brought it to Fort Knox and to another undisclosed location in the United States. They got the gold back that had been stolen and then also the royals, the royal gold that they had stolen all the gold too, and they got that back. Did you get that information from Kim Possible or separately? No, but she, I think, has talked about it. I think I've heard okay. her mention that at some point. I mean, where, where did you get that information from? Um, I got that from my intel that I, I read twice a day. I have a lot of intel that comes through 
that's not from Kim Possible then. Mm -mm. But oh, she so probably has favorite. talked about it because she's one of the paymasters. Okay. I understand her to be a paymaster. I don't think she's the only one though. I think that the Chinese dragon, white dragon elders are the main uh, group that are funding the, the re reset of the global current currency reset, the global financial reset. Okay. Um, and I believe that they are of a Himalayan descent and they were never in the communist regime. They were never part of that. They were, they're an ancient dragon bloodline right, of the, of the earth. And then there's Kim, who claims to have the purest DNA on the planet. <laughs> I don't- I mean, when you say purest says, DNA, what is- That's what she what says. What does pure mean? The, I mean? Right, exactly. So she says she has the purest human DNA of the planet, meaning not mixed. Not but, mixed with, um, with what, the other reptilians? Species. Probably. You mean Anunnaki? Yeah, I don't okay. know. I'm just but curious. <laughs> I don't personally, she's never really defined it, in my opinion. She hasn't defined it enough for people to actually know what the fuck she's talking about. Which okay. is why people don't trust her. To, okay. to make a claim like that, to make a claim that you have the purest DNA on the planet, is putting is separating yourself. It's an egoic thing, but it could be actually technically true that she has the purest DNA because she's at the center of the 300 families, right? So in terms of the 300 families and she is in the recipient position and everyone else has been whatever, that's still to me, those 300 families, that's Illuminati, that's royal, that's reptilian to me, that's, you know, Anunnaki bloodlines, right? I personally have seven bloodlines. Seven royal bloodlines. So, five so there's which, so five instead of, of thirteen, are, are Christ bloodlines, and two so in, of which are Anunnaki. So instead of thirteen Illuminati families, you're saying there's three hundred. Yes. Okay. There's actually thirteen, and then there's thirteen that control the thirteen, but then at total there's three hundred families that are involved, and she says that she's at the center and the very center recipient person that's alive that is in the position of owning the trust. Okay. 300 families that were involved in the, in the, the world trust that held the monies of the planet. Okay, so let me, let me get this straight. So, um, so this, these 300 families, were they part of the cabal? Or in my, are, opinion, is it mixed, in my or? personal opinion, I believe that these families were all part of the royal bloodlines, right? That yeah. are part of the, the, it could be a mix because here's how it works. There are certain, okay, so for example, with the, um, the Jasara, that was actually created by four people within the bloodlines, four different families, and one was the Jasolfis. And the woman, one of the women that was involved in the Jasolfi, the one that started Jasara, right? She was of a royal lineage, right? Involved in bringing abundance and prosperity back to the planet. And that was, you know, when Jasara was first created, she was a part of that. She's no longer on the planet, but she came in and spoke to me through a series of sessions. She made herself known and we started having conversations about the whole Jasara thing. Cause I was like, I want to know if this is real or not. I want to know what the deal is with this. If it's St. Germain related or what's going on, like, what is Jasara? Please give me some clarity about this. And I was working with somebody and it came through the whole situation and we, we got information that this particular woman was the originator of the Jasara and she came to me and thanked me, right? She was coming to actually thank me. And then I was like, well, who are you? Like what, you know, what's going on here? And so she started to explain that there were four individuals that started Jasara originally that created the, the actual act itself to be enacted right and the requirements of that and what that meant 
and then Nassara was an offshoot of that as well, right? Nassara was just, just for the United States, but she was in Italy. She's Italian. So it was some of the Italian families that are actually above the 13 other families. And she's in one of those families that control was, con and so within those families, there's good people. And then there's people that have turned, right? So originally these, some of the original royal bloodlines are, they're beautiful, they're pure, they're not, um, but at this point, most of the bloodlines have been uh, compromised, if you will. I wouldn't say there's a pure bloodline left, right? It's, it's so spread out now. And, and there are so many people that are uh, descendants of royal lineages at this point that it's, it's hard to determine if there's a pure, 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 pure. But what we do know is that there are um, the Sophia bloodline, which is uh, not one particular bloodline, but the Sophia Christ codes within the blood, within the DNA, spreads through the Christ lineages specifically. And, um, you know, there may be other bloodlines, royal bloodlines that have those codes of light, but they came through the Christ lineage right so the christ lineage is spread through the royal bloodlines and marie antoinette is an example of that actually so marie antoinette was a is one of the pure believe it or not she's one of the most pure bloodlines right and her actions of course didn't result in being potentially benevolent but we don't actually know either about marie antoinette and and what she so a lot of the bloodline families have had so much inbreeding and so much fighting and so much uh betrayal between one another we don't actually know the true stories we only know the stories that the deep state wants us to know right true history may be very different than what is being told to us through Wikipedia. Oh, we God. know now that Wikipedia is compromised. It has so become way very, compromised. Clear, very clear that Wikipedia is completely compromised. And yet that's what everybody goes to, Google and Wikipedia. Yeah, right? I know. I so know. you horrible. have to understand that the stream of information that the population is getting is compromised. Yeah. I mean, same thing with the science. The science exactly. is also compromised. Exactly. Oh my God. It's completely, almost all corrupt. It's completely corrupt at this point. You know, yeah. like Bill Bill Nye, is that his name? Yeah, Bill Nye, the science guy. Pete, yeah. pedophile. Yeah. Straight I, up. I can believe watch it. His, watch, his, watch his stuff. It's like he's a total pedophile. There's no question. Like you can see the programming in his, in his, children's shows it is astonishing that he has been able to get away with that it's astonishing that anybody has been able to get away with toddler toddlers and tiaras tiaras and toddlers, whatever that one is so it's important to understand that they have been running the world for a very 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 long time and so of course if a businessman who's a political outsider comes in and is calling everybody out right? And he was asked to run for president. He was not willing to run for president, but he's like, somebody's got to go in and fix this shit. He's been saying the same thing since 1985. It's not like he's new to any of this. He had mad respect, mad respect in New York. He was a well-known businessman all over the world. He knows everyone. He's the only person I know of that could actually do what's being done right now. Yeah. I, th I think you're right on. And, and no matter what anybody says about they don't trust him or whatever, it's because they don't, they're not doing any research. They're not looking at the evidence of what's actually going on. They're not seeing that troops are being deployed in certain areas and that underground bases are being blown up. And there's children, 300,000 children being rescued in Melbourne right now and 200,000 children that were rescued in New York. That's a lot of kids. That's five, that's a half a million people just in two cities. Yeah. Imagine, just imagine what 
it's going to be like when we come out of this and when everything gets exposed, how much information it's going to blow everybody's minds up. Like they're just going to go, but the only way that we can be dismantled from this spell is to know the truth. The truth must prevail. And so anybody that calls anybody a conspiracy theorist at this point, the, the term conspiracy theory was directly in response and in reaction to the Warren Commission report that came out questioning the narrative in regards to the JFK assassination in 1976. And they made a counter document to try to influence and manage everybody questioning what was going on because the Warren Commission was a well-respected situation of journalistic reporting, right? Yeah. Right. So it's important to understand all these details because if you don't have them, it's very hard to make an informed opinion about something, right? Sorry, I've been yelling this whole time because my um, air conditioner was on. <laughs> and now I don't have to yell so much. I apologize, everybody. I was just talking over the, the loud uh, air conditioner that was blasting. No, your passion was co coming through. And my passion was definitely there. I'm definitely being <laughs> passionate these days with my... I, I kind of went off yesterday on Instagram Live. I just, I got on there and I was like, you need to wake the fuck up. <laughs> you know, like I was just like, wake up people. Because this is the other part of it is that we have this cosmic energy coming onto the planet right now. We are literally in the middle of a solar wave. The Schumann resonance is, is doing a repeat copy and paste for two 48 hour, for 48 hours. And now it's in a blackout. And then it, uh, it popped on for a second and then it went into a blackout again. I mean, it means that the energy waves are, you know, off the charts, basically, number one. And number two, the other thing I thought of is that it's rebooting into the quantum financial system and it's going off of the Swiss, SWIFT system because the SWIFT system was literally off, turned offline supposedly on the 1st or the oh, 31st. the 1st of September? Yeah, and then the 2nd of September is when it went flat. Interesting. So it's just kind of interesting that the, the, the alignment of that is too, I mean, it's fascinating to think about. Now, we don't know for sure if the SWIFT system has come completely offline or not. There's some people that say it may be like they are still trying to keep it online and they're fighting with every breath they have. But once that's offline, all bets are off. Because the quantum financial system is, the QFS system is already online. It's already operating and it's fully functional. So it's just a matter QFS of meaning moments. quantum financial system, is that what you're saying? Yes. And what is that exactly? So that is an off-planet system that is holding the financial system now instead of the SWIFT system. And that system is completely transparent. There's no way to, uh, so anyone that would be participating in human trafficking through money would be completely cut off from, from having any access to their monies. Okay. So it's a transparent system. So you can see, they can see because it's all AI, you can see what's going on. So they're using it to observe and monitor the financial transactions. It's fully transparent now. Whereas the SWIFT system, all of the monies funneled up to a trust that was controlled by the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. The SWIFT system was created by them. So the entire financial banking systems of the planet were all funneling up to two families. 
and they were all in positions of power. For example, Ellen was a gatekeeper. Ellen DeGeneres, she is a Rockefeller. Tom Hanks is a Rockefeller. So we could go on and on about who's a Rockefeller. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is a Rockefeller. So we need to understand that like these people are actually part of those bloodline families that are trafficking, human, trafficking humans, you know, performing satanic ritual, adrenochrome producers, selling it across the planet. Um, so here's an interesting thing. Okay, so gold is something like $35,000 a kilogram or something, right? And adrenochrome powder was $1 billion a kilogram. Wow. The most valuable commodity on the planet. Selling publicly on Alibaba. Tons of I know, listings. I saw it, I saw it. One listing made $300,000 in, in nine months, in, 220, in 2020. And sorry, at that point it was seven months. So it had made $300,000 on one listing in the US mostly. Yeah. We need to understand that this is a serious problem. And why else would they be going about it the way that they're going about it? They have to, because there's no other way that they could um, maneuver all of these levels without having a huge team of people available to, to counteract the other huge team. I mean, it's a, we're in a war. We're in World War III. Like, this is literally, I don't want to say it, but I have to say it. We're in World War III right now. Yeah. And it's a war on our consciousness. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, I, I'm going to have to uh, I know, I've been babbling at I'm, you. <laughs> well, it's just I'm starting to get filled up. <laughs> you know saturated. what I mean? Saturated. I'm saturated you again. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not again. I wanted but... you to talk. I wanted to listen, actually, and I started babbling. Well, you, were, you have a lot of information. Yeah, I do. You know, and, and so, you know. And I haven't been talking it, about it much. Well, <laughs> so it comes I, out. I totally understand. I totally understand. If I didn't have my girlfriend, I, you know, I would probably get all like, I have to say, I have to say. You know, yeah, right. Something. You have somebody to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Uh, <laughs> Which is great <laughs> for you. But I mean, you have a ton of information. And so, you know, uh, it just kind yeah. of. Comes in and it just I apologize. And the energetic oh, no, don't though, apologize. I'm very, like charged right now. So I yeah. apologize if my energy normally I can deliver the information very calm. I'm just, you know. No, I, I loved I loved the way you were. I totally loved it. Okay, I just want you to know that. It's just that, I know I do saturate people though. It's true. Well, <laughs> it, yeah. happens a lot. Well, it happens. I mean you you give off a lot of energy. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm like a nuclear freaking reactor <laughs> but yeah. you're still and i don't extreme. even drink caffeine dude it's like and, and, and you're very lovable oh <laughs> thank you i i do try to be as lovable as possible but well, you are. I, I think i have a lot of love in my heart and yeah and so that's my main directive um, yeah. And talking about this stuff is actually really difficult for me. So I think I actually, on some level, I have to push. You know what I mean? I actually have to push myself to talk about it um, because it's such uh, controversial information. And I tend to steer away from controversy, even though I speak my truth, right? I tend to steer away from confrontation. And so when I am presented with information that I, I feel like I need to get out, I have to like amplify myself just to get it out, just to like force myself to say what I need to say. It's kind of funny, actually. Yeah. So. Well, so do you want to, do you want to meet again? Sure. <laughs> we can keep doing this. I love it. I'm having fun with it. It's like, who knows where this is going, right? It just, 
it sort of, it, I think it's really important actually for me, it's about community. It's about when you know somebody and you have a heart resonance or a connection with someone, to be able to have conversations, right? Mm -hmm. that, that really um, benefit other people that we can share with other people. But what I have found is I tend to dominate the conversation with you Whereas with other people, I don't do that. And I'm wondering if that's just because you're a really good listener and you ask questions and you're interviewing me, or if it's that, like, it's just a natural thing for you to be a listener more than a talker. Well, it depends. But um, with you, I think that I am more of an interviewer and I ask questions okay. and I'm a good listener. I am a good listener. You're a very good listener. Yeah. But I actually wanted to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I you're more to interesting. Ask you questions. Well, well uh, see, that's I'm, funny. I'm more. I'm more on the like kind of the reality political level. Well, that's what I am curious about because you have a lot of information in relation to that, and I. Well, think I did. I did share about yeah. about the you know 2018 midterm elections and about Nancy Pelosi and you know yeah. so I do know those. I do of have things. a lot of co political questions that maybe that would be the way to steer it is to for me to ask some questions about clarity that I need, but that only comes up in our conversations. You know, like I don't necessarily like for example the shutdown of the government back in 2019, I think it was, the beginning of 2019, maybe 2018. The shutdown? Are you talking about the- When they were threatening to shut down the government with Trump and the whole- Oh, right. No, so that was like, um, that 20, uh, yeah, it was beginning of 2018, I believe. Right. Or no, what was it? No, it was- 2019, um, I think. Yeah, it was 2019, yeah. It was the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019. Exactly. And then yeah. Pelosi went into the Speaker of the House position after that or right around that time. Yes. So what I saw was this video, and this is a curiosity. So I saw a video of uh, Pelosi, Schumer, Mike Pence, and Trump. And I could see in that video that Mike Pence was with Pelosi. I could see the connection there. And he has some kind of a connection with her. And I don't quite understand it. But there's a, there's a because he's a government official and he's been in there for a while, I can see that they have a developed relationship, right? And then here's Trump, the outsider. And then we've got Schumer, like throwing daggers at him, you know, and then Pelosi's trying to be polite, but she wants to say all this stuff, but she's trying to be official, like because they're press are in there. And and what I saw was Trump really fighting these people because they had been nasty to him behind closed doors. And so when they got into the position of being in front of the press, they were acting like they were all high and mighty. But in fact, he was being transparent and honest and authentic and saying, you guys are full of shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then they used that example on the Wikipedia. They used that video on Wikipedia and they forwarded it right to the point where Chuck Schumer and him were having an argument. And then Trump is so done that he cuts him off and says, okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. And Schumer's just like, burr, 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 you know? but it, they make it look like it's Trump that's the problem. So then I rewound and I watched the whole thing, right? And then that's when I saw the dynamic that was playing out. They think they are like holier than thou because they've been in political whatever and that there's a way to do things and it has to be this way and you're going against the way that it is. And he's saying, I think we all agree that there needs to be protection at the border. <laughs> you know, like he's just like, there are, you know, drug traffickers coming in. And when you put up the wall, it drops by 96%. Here's exactly. the numbers. And yep. he's like, she's like, those aren't accurate numbers. That's not real. <laughs> and you're yep. like, oh my God, this is insanity. No wonder he's fighting for his life. And people are blaming him because he has to rise up to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the media and the, I mean, it's, he's fighting battles on so many fronts. On so many levels, bless his heart. I mean, I just yeah. feel a lot of compassion for what he is taking on and I'm so grateful for him. And yeah, I, so really I don't care anymore what anybody says to me about him. I just, I've gotten to that point where I see and respect all the actions that he has taken to change the mess that clean up the mess that we've been in. And yes. that's a critical thinker talking. That's not, and that's a truther. That's someone who's like a truther who, who looks for the truth, regardless of who's anybody. Like I'm not siding with one person or the other. I'm just looking at the, the situation and the facts. Right. Yeah. So I think it's really important though, because you are a Trump supporter and you have been political and you have been watching all of these levels. And I haven't, that, that any piece of information that I can glean or that we can all understand from your wisdom is important to me. And it feels important that we do that, right? Well, we'll, we'll talk again. Yes. I appreciate your time so much. Thank you uh, for appreciate being with your me time. and chatting Thanks. with me. I appreciate it. I'm sorry that I was so, char I'm just so charged right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I am literally just like on fire this last yeah, few days. Yeah, I, I get it. Sorry. I get it. And I, I feel like I'm kind of like Trump. Like I have a personality like Trump. I'm a dragon. So I can see the dragon, you know, I can see the like, rawr, you know, like it, it, <laughs> I respect that because I know what that is, you know. So, and then there's the soft wavy part too. Like there's the soft feminine, whatever, but I'm in dragon mama right now and it's okay. It's okay to Absolutely. be my dragon self. Look at all my sparkly things, you know? Oh like, yeah. All the sparklies on because I'm in my dragon mode. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off now. Thank you everybody for being here. I so appreciate you being here and thanks for listening to our conversation. Bye. <laughs>